Secretary of the United States Department of Veterans Affairs, Robert Wilkie, has over 20 years of experience in the area of defense readiness at both the national and international levels. He's a colonel in the U.S. Air Force Reserves and is the highest ranking member of U.S. administration to ever visit this site. I have the honor to call upon Secretary Wilkie. First, to the families of 9-11 who have made the bonds between this ancient land and the United States of America even stronger. When William Bradford stepped off of the Mayflower in 1620, he turned to the words of Jeremiah and he said, come let us declare Zion in the word of God and let us call our new home in the names Bethesda, Bethsaida, Canaan, and Jerusalem. In 1790, in his letter to the Turo Synagogue in Newport, Rhode Island, General George Washington proclaimed a new dawn for Western civilization. He said that those whose survival and perseverance laid the intellectual and spiritual foundation for Western literature and art, the Renaissance and the Enlightenment, were now welcome in the new land. He wrote, it is now no more that toleration is spoken of as if it were the indulgence of one class of people that another enjoyed the exercise of their inherent natural rights. And he said, May the children of the stock of Abraham who dwell in this land continue to merit and enjoy the goodwill of other inhabitants while everyone shall sit in safety under his own vine and fig tree and there shall be none to make him afraid. General Washington was not preaching mere tolerance. He was calling for revolutionary acceptance. The late Dr. Charles Krauthammer argued that what Washington saw in America was a continuation of the promise of Jerusalem, where the peoples of the world converge in peace, can worship in freedom, and enjoy the greatest of all uncharted rights, and that is the right to be left alone. More than a century and a half after Washington spoke those words to Turo, America would be present for the birth of this new Israel. President Harry Truman recognized the sovereignty of this land a mere 11 minutes after independence was proclaimed in 1948. In welcoming Chaim Weitzman to Washington, D.C. in 1950, President Harry Truman took up General Washington's charge that the United States was built upon the foundations of freedom erected here. And he said, that the fundamental basis of America's law was given to Moses on the Mount. The fundamental basis for America's Bill of Rights comes from the teachings that we get from Exodus, Isaiah, and St. Paul. Fifty years after President Truman spoke those words, the horrific acts of September 11, 2001 unfolded and once again reminded us that the values handed down to our nations from the prophets and the pioneers are always under threat. September 11th was an attack on civilization itself. The nearly 3,000 who perished that day came from 78 countries, five from Israel. Close to half of the Earth's nations lay claim to the right to memorialize their lost people. It was an act of violence born of religious hatred, an evil inversion of George Washington's grand vision for America that he described in that letter to Turo where he said that the United States of America gives to bigotry no sanction and to persecution no assistance. It is no surprise then that the events 18 years ago would strengthen the deep bonds between the United States and Israel. 
each year. We visit this hallowed site and marvel that the people of Israel could take part of the wreckage from New York City and make something beautiful and hopeful from it. It is a deep gesture of affection between our two nations that expresses the depth of our historic relationship and teaches us the true meaning of words like friendship and courage. We take it as a special sign of kinship that is so deep that we are not only content to share our triumphs, but we are compelled to share our tragedies. It was that sense of gratitude and affection and admiration that led our president to say that America's flag will permanently be planted in this holiest of cities. Because of that vision, from time on, no American will ever have to repeat those hopeful words next year in Jerusalem. So on behalf of the President of the United States, we thank Israel. We thank Israel for being a place on earth with whom our people share everything in freedom. God bless you and thank you.